Welcome to the Cloud365 Global Com2 Virtual Conference. Thank you for joining me today for a whirlwind tour through seven, no, eight of the most important Microsoft 365 services. My name is Mark Stokes. I'm a uh, traditionally a SharePoint developer by trade. I've been running my own businesses and doing SharePoint solution architecture over the last few years. Um, I'm also a massive advocate of the Power Platform. So I'm definitely part of the Power Addict movement and I encourage you to have a look at that too. I run a company called Otalo Internet and we build out the box uh, internet templates and also run a YouTube channel where we're currently running a 10 part isolation conversation um, all about lockdown, isolation and how people are coping and how different teams can work together. And every Friday uh, I run a uh, Office 365 Insider webinar where I talk about changes to the updates on the roadmap and the message center instance that are going on. So I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, the links, are, links are, are available. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick run through a number of the key services that you get with Microsoft 365. These sessions are not intended to be in depth, um, you're going to get that throughout the rest of the day, but this is going to give you an overview and a, a flavour of what those, um, those products are and how they come together in a, uh, in a combined solution. Just to set the scene, I spent about two days, probably about a day's worth of build and two days because I was recording it, to actually build this entire solution. So if you want to get a, an idea of how quick we can throw these things together and have, actually have them work, then that should give you some kind of uh, guidance. So. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at SharePoint, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Teams, Power Automate, Power Apps, Power Virtual Agent, Power BI and Adaptive Cards. So SharePoint is kind of the old, uh, the old hat now. So SharePoint's been around for a very long time. If you haven't come across it before, then in its most essence, it gives us a platform to store and retrieve information across the business. So that might be document and file based content, it might be list based content uh, or things like that or images or videos and things like that. So what we're looking at with SharePoint is that online, um, basically an online file share uh, which gives us a heck of a lot more power. Things like metadata and tags and categories on our content gives us the ability to create views of our content and search across multiple sources. So it's really about that area where we can just store content and then go and retrieve it as well. It generally is used for two different flavors. We either use SharePoint for collaborative work, and that enables um, uh, users and power users to, to share content, work on content together, co-author documents and things like that. So it, that way of working together as teams to, to build content. The second area is around a Microsoft um, intranet or a modern intranet. So what we can do then is we can actually have fewer editors and more consumers where we can push content to people that they need to see. That might be corporate policies, it might be corporate news, it might be brand guidelines and things like that. Or maybe we want to give users forms to fill in so that they can actually interact back with us. So they're the two kind of angles that people tend to use with SharePoint. And the third one is slightly grow, is uh, slowly growing, which is around the same concept. And that's really SharePoint as a microservice. So when we think about things like SharePoint Online files or Microsoft Teams files tab or Microsoft OneDrive for business, then really under the hood that's all using SharePoint. So we're almost in some ways moving SharePoint away from the front end presentation and using it just as that file store or that content store that we can surface through other applications. Microsoft Forms is the next technology. So Microsoft Forms is coming in to slightly replace InfoPath, but not really. Uh, so it gives us the ability to do some short forms, short surveys and quizzes um, and get feedback from users. So we can put in a whole load of different question types, like multiple choice questions or grids or text or things like that. So we can share these out with people in our business or even anonymously and remotely out on the internet as well. Um, so it's a really good way of capturing information. Uh, it renders down really nicely onto mobile phones or into your browser and it's really, really useful. It comes in two flavors. We have Forms and Forms Pro. Forms Pro is a paid version which gives us some uh, better sharing capabilities, some better analytics and a few, a few other benefits like that. But for the most case, no, uh, normal Forms is, is just good enough and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Microsoft Teams is uh, rapidly becoming a central hub for where we do work. So Teams is quickly becoming as important and as used as Outlook is on the desktop. So quite often now, I will start Teams first in the morning and then Outlook second. 
where Outlook is very good for messaging and emails and calendaring and things like that, um, Teams is filling the space for our remote collaborative environment. So a place to have chats and conversations as opposed to formal email conversations. A place to um, retrieve files. So we can have a Microsoft team maybe for a department, let's say uh, marketing, and then we can have channels within that which then relate to subject, uh, uh, areas of subject interest. Okay? Or you might have a team for a client's database and a channel per client where we can store related information. We can put wikis in there and Power BI dashboards and Surface web pages and planner um, boards. So we can bring all this content into this central hub and the central place to actually collaborate and work together. Power Automate, really awesome, one of my favorites. So it used to be called Microsoft Flow, so when you're looking on the internet, you might see some different names for it. But the official name is Power Automate, and we build flows within Power Automate. This is a, uh, a technology that gives us an automation engine. So we, if we have any tasks that we do regularly, day to day, then we can build a flow to actually go and automate that task for us. And there's a lot of power in uh, doing that. And we can actually save a lot of time. So if you go off, for example, and look at a news feed and we want to pull a news story in from the BBC every time that it gets published, it can take a lot of time manually to do that, to check it, to update it, to copy it to our SharePoint list and do all those updates. But it's a, a process-driven activity that's um, configurable step by step. So why not use a technology to automate that task and give us a little bit of time back? So we're going to look at that. And as you can see, there's a lot of connectors. All of these these are connectors here of different systems that we can interact with. And there's over 300, 330, I think. There's a lot of connectors for a lot of different systems. And in the nice new Microsoft way, it's not all Microsoft products. We can interact with a lot of external systems. So things like um, uh, SAP or um, Jira and different, or Trello and all these different products and services, um, MailChimp and things like that. So a whole load. And we can also create our own custom connectors as well. So we get a lot of power by being able to connect into different systems. Power Apps is a technology that gives us the ability to um, do rapid application development. It's a drag and drop, it's a graphical um, interface to building um, applications that are rendered beautifully on mobile phones or in the desktop or in the browser. Um, so it's a really nice way. It's a low code or no code, depends on what your definition is, uh, way of building applications very quickly. We're seeing a lot more interest in this at the current time when this is being filled, filmed because we're currently in lockdown at the moment due to coronavirus. So we're seeing a lot of businesses really embracing the power and the speed that they can bring tools to market for their employees. And they're doing that using Power Apps. Now we tend to find a lot of these products do have crossover, so we may need to integrate some flows with our power apps or some other technologies. Um, and that's what we're gonna look at today, how they all tie together. Power Virtual Agents, this is still a bit of a new kid on the block, although it has been around for about a year now. So um, I've just started getting, uh, having to play with these lately and I absolutely love them. This is a really good, easy way to build bots for your business. Um, it takes a design surface, very similar to um, Power Automate, to actually allow you to drag and drop the flow through conversations. And we're going to see that today and how that works. But it comes very easy to build a bot to engage in a conversation and have different routes uh, based on what feedback we get from the user. We can even go off and call Power Automate flows um, as different steps. If we need to check some data or come back and give some information to the user, we can do that very easily. Now, this does come with a cost at the moment is about $1,000 per month uh, for up to 2,000 instances. So we need to think very seriously about the cost of savings that we have. Now, if you equate lots of people's time, then maybe we can equate that cost um, recovery very, very quick. Or if we're going out to market or to external users, then I'm sure lots of businesses will find a lot of value in this. But for the enthusiast and for smaller use, it maybe it is on the slightly more expensive side. Power BI is a great tool. Power BI has been around for a while now, and this just gives us the ability to pull in um, and interact with our data. Um, we can do big data work here, so we can bring thousands and millions of records in from some data sources, and we can visualize them very, very neatly um, in this design service, and we can publish them out for users to see. So Power BI has got a lot of strength. We're going to use this to look at some, uh, some uh, stats and some analysis um, through our, our demo application. 
adaptive cards. This is the last one that I've added in there. So this is the eighth um, uh, one that I decided to add in after I submitted the session. Adaptive cards are really, really useful. Quite often we want to engage some uh, feedback from users, but we don't necessarily know what devices those users are, uh, are using. So some people may live in a Microsoft Teams world, some people like, might use email, some people might uh, like mobile applications. So a really neat thing with adaptive cards is it lets us define what we want to show to the user using the JSON note, um, uh, uh, markup. So I'll show you what that looks like later. Um, so it is a bit of a techie um, look on it, but it makes it really easy. But the nice thing is all we need to do, is we just need to define what our questions are. So I want a multiple choice question and here are the options. And then we deliver that to the device that's gonna present it, maybe a mobile phone or Microsoft Teams or Slack or Skype. Um, and then it decides how to best render it um, for that particular channel. Because what we need to remember is our users are using different channels to engage with the business and to consume content. Therefore, we need to try and get everything to them where they are. And Adaptive Cars does a really, really good job at this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at a demo application that brings all these together and we're going to build a coronavirus or a COVID-19 response system for an organisation. We're going to build seven scenarios that uses all these tools and bring them together into a common application. So you can see how each of them looks, how a quick build uh, for, for some of these and then how they kind of uh, group together under a Teams portal as well. So first of all, we're going to create a team and the team is going to be around our uh, COVID-19 response system. So this is going to be a central repository where users can find all the content and the policies and the information they need uh, whilst they're working in lockdown. Okay, so it's a central place people go to get all the information they need and feedback to us. We're going to pull in some latest news from the BBC website. So when the BBC website publishes a news story in their health channel, which is where most of the coronavirus stuff goes, we're actually going to pull that in using Power Automate and we're going to push that into the Microsoft team. So when we look at the team's conversation, we're going to see those news stories being published right there. So users can just see, uh, again, a group view of everything that goes on. And we're going to automate that so we don't need to get involved with it. Then we're going to build a COVID-19 self-declaration form. So we need to know when our employees have actually uh, are showing symptoms of COVID-19. Maybe they've been tested, maybe they haven't, but we need them to self-declare that they believe that they have uh, got the virus and that maybe they need to take some time off. And it allows us to keep a check and a control on um, how much of our workforce is being affected by the situation. But maybe sometimes people aren't entirely sure whether it is coronavirus uh, uh, or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a power virtual agent to help them run through a system checker and decide whether we believe that they maybe have the virus or not. So we're going to take them through a series of questions, get some feedback, and then we can actually give them some advice and decide whether we think they should be self-declaring or not. Whilst people are working remotely and working from home, it can be very difficult to manage their um, to manage their mental health and we need to make sure that our employees are okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an adaptive card that's going to send a simple are you okay message to people a couple of times a week and they're just going to be able to grade one to five you know or sorry one to ten how they're feeling. Pretty rubbish to pretty awesome and everything in between. So we're going to try and capture how people's mental health is at the moment and then we can identify if anyone's not happy or struggling and we can reach out and help them. Because we have a, a lot of safeguarding issues that we need to take um, seriously as employers um, to make sure our staff are okay. And then we also want to try it when people go exercise. Um, in our business, we find exercise is a massive um, boost to people's mental health. So we want to know when people last got some exercise and how that relates to how their current state of mind is. And then we can go and do some work on that. Then we're going to use Power BI to show you some stats and figures. We want to track how coronavirus is uh, spreading through the UK and we want to know what the impact is. Are we past the curve and where are we? Just so we can have some understanding of the current situation and uh, make some decisions based on whether we should ease our lockdown rules or not. And then we're going to use a Power App. So some people would like a mobile app to bring all the content together. So we're going to show some of the content on the Power App and we can also use that to deliver notifications. So if we have some important information we need to give out to our users, we can use that Power App to do it. Now, when we go through the demo, I'll show you how it all works and then we'll go through. I'm going to massively speed up the build, but you're going to see that build and you can see the steps that we go through.
like I said, it's not meant to be a deep dive into the build, so it will be sped up, but it gives you a flavor. And then when you go to the sessions later today, you'll be able to see more of a deep dive on building these types of applications. So in our demo, we have our Microsoft team. So we can see that we have a team and three channels in here. We have the general channel where most of our content will go. We have a hot desk writer and we have a your questions answered channel. So we can separate out the conversation slightly. If we go into our general channel, then we can see that we have a whole set of news here coming from an external source. So these are coming from BBC News. You may notice a little alert on the, uh, on the mobile phone up there. So we get a notification coming through from our Power Apps. The next tab we have is a set of files. This is where we can put some policies in there, some PDFs, some, um, some posters that people might want to have a look at, uh, and some instructions. Okay, we'll get all, all our normal functionality such as share, open, uh, open in SharePoint, sync, things like that. Next tab over, what we can see is we have a, a wiki here, and this allows us to quickly put in our policies and our working practices. So it's just a simple place for users to go and very quickly see what the current policies are and what the current uh, working practices are. So it's just nice and easy to consume. We can mention people in here as well, so we can get alerts or put contact details in of people that need to be contacted um, on certain um, conditions. And then we can see we're actually embedded in some websites as well. So we want to make sure our users have the most up-to-date information possible, and that includes um, information from the government. So here we can see some websites from gov.uk. Maybe even want to show a PDF. So this is a PDF of a poster, which gives some more useful information, including things like how to wash your hands and how to uh, stay hygienic. And then what we've done, we've actually embedded a form as well. So people can actually go here and self-declare if they feel that they have COVID um, symptoms. So they can go right in, we've got a Microsoft form, and they can fill it in straight away. We'll just sit through this form quickly, fill in the pertinent information. There we go, just say the symptoms that we uh, think we're suffering, whether we can work from home, and now that, that's submitted. And then that can kick off some process in the background for somebody to action and do something with. Now we have a Power BI dashboard. Here's our analytics uh, analysis here. So we can actually see some various uh, information around the state of COVID-19 um, across the, the, the whole of the United Kingdom. We can see stats, maybe regions uh, that are more susceptible than other regions, and where we are in the curve. So we can start to make some intelligent decisions on how we should respond to this, um, this, this situation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and look at our bot. We're going to look at our symptom checker. You can see that I've actually um, spoken to this bot before. I've been through this, but I'm just going to say hi to wake it up. And it's going to ask me some questions. So it's going to take me through uh, some questions to assess um, the, the symptoms that I may be suffering. Uh, and, uh, and then it will make some decisions on what I should do. We try to program to be a little bit friendly, give some uh, nice friendly responses rather than just kind of static um, you know, robot-esque uh, responses. So we go here that it actually thinks that maybe I am suffering um, from coronavirus and therefore maybe I should actually go and self-declare and it can link me directly off to the form. So the last thing we have here is we're going to show an adaptive card. So this is where we're actually going to um, assess people's mental health so I can fill in um, how I'm feeling today and maybe when I last got some exercise and that's going to update and show that I've completed it. Okay, so let's go through and take a look at how we build a solution. It's going to be rapid fire, but I'll talk through the steps we go in. So I'll just start it going. And the first thing we do is create our team. Okay, so we give it a nice useful name. We're going to make this available to all people in the organisation. And first thing we'll do is go across the top. So in our general channel, we have um, our files tab and we have a wiki. We're going to rename the wiki policies. And then this is going to restore our working practices and our policies uh, for the application. We can see we'll put a chat in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a flow now in Power Automate. And this flow is going to take um, content from an RSS feed from the BBC News website, and it's going to populate information into it. So we can use our RSS new item um, trigger. And then what we'll do first of all is we'll use a compose action to go and find what information that gives us. So when a new item um, is added to the RSS feed, the compose action just lets us have a look at the raw data that's in there. So what we'll do, we'll just go and run that. And then actually at this point, it's a bit frustrating here, but we have to actually wait for the RSS feed to add a new item. So you might actually in this case have to wait a little bit. Um, so I've just kind of zipped ahead a little bit. 
And what I'm going to do now is just go and add it to a Microsoft Teams channel. And we're going to pick the, uh, the team and the channel that we want to put it to. So we're going to put it to the uh, COVID-19 team and that channel. And then we'll put the body text in. And then we can sit there and run that. And if we just watch that over a period of time, we can see that that's now putting in our uh, raw JSON into the message. So that's not going to be particularly consumable for people. So now we know what that JSON looks like from the RSS feed. We can actually use a pass JSON function um, to, to get access to the, the little bits of information within that JSON object. If you don't know what JSON is, J-S-O-N, I recommend going and reading about it. You're going to use that an awful lot in Microsoft Flow. Okay, so what we do, we're just going to paste in an example of our RSS uh, item and then we can generate a schema of it. By generating that schema, it means we can access the properties like body and title and publish dates and things like that. So we're going to uh, make our message a little bit um, prettier uh, to Microsoft Teams and that's it. And that is how we get an RSS feed item from BBC News website and post it into Microsoft Teams. Dead easy. So we can just look at that run through and we see now that our, uh, our messages are a lot nicer and a lot more pleasant. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go and create a Microsoft form. So this is going to be our self-declaration form. So first thing that's most important is to give it a title, a description and a funky icon. And then we can add our questions in. So we'll just zip through uh, these questions. We want to capture the user's first name, last name, uh, some more information about them, maybe their employee, employee number. Um, and various other things we want to do. Um, okay, what department they're in, so maybe we want to track um, the, the flow of COVID-19 throughout different departments in our organisation, so we can track, capture that. We may be able to get that in the Microsoft flow that, that will be triggered from this um, by using the Office 365 Get User Profile action, and we might be able to interpret that if our data is correct to start with. In this case, we're just going to ask the user to keep it nice and simple. Take them a few, through a few other questions. So basically, <clears throat> ask them if they think they've got COVID-19. We're going to ask them what their symptoms are. Ask them whether we th they think they're able to work from home, that kind of thing. So we'll just fill out the rest of that form. So this is a nice one. So this lets us um, have multiple options for an answer. So this could be our, our symptom checker. Uh, so we can ask them to declare if they've had a fever or a cough or uh, difficulty breathing or uh, any other symptoms, things like that. And they can choose yes or no off the back of it. It's just a nice way to lay that out rather than doing lots of uh, questions. And we can access each of those in our Microsoft Flow later on. There you go, there's our form done. So we can go and do it, fill it out um, by testing it, make sure it all works, put all my details in. <clears throat> you see we're using some different sections here as well, so we can actually walk them through the, the form section by section, which is quite nice, so it's not just one big form. And they're done. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a, uh, a list here. Uh, for self-declaration because whilst replying to a Microsoft form is great, what we want to do is we want to put it into a SharePoint list so it's easy for us to consume that content and actually do something with it. So we'll create a SharePoint list and we'll put some fields on it as you can see here. These basically just match the fields in the form um, that we've just created. And then we'll use Power Automate to create a flow that will allow us to take the form submission, put it into a SharePoint list, and then we can use that later on in our Power BI reporting if we want to for our analytics and analysis. So just finish that up, <clears throat> create a few. You might notice with um, modern SharePoint now, when we create columns with spaces in, it automatically removes that space from um, the internal name of the column. So if you're a little bit more advanced, a bit more of a developer, that's something that will be really, really useful to you. So, okay, so if we just run our, um, our flow, so just going to create a new flow now, sorry. And this is going to be triggered by a Microsoft form response. So what we do, the first thing we have to do is when a, a, a form response is submitted, is we have to go off and get the details of that form submission. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, and then we're going to use the SharePoint create item. So we're just going to add the answers from the Microsoft form submission into our create item um, action there. And we're just going to map them one-to-one -one, because our fields are maps one-to-one -one from the form to the SharePoint list. Keep it nice and easy. Now, I haven't filled in the yes-no fields because I don't know what they're going to look like. When they come back from um, the Microsoft form, they're going to be true or false or yes or no or one or zero. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to create a, um, 
I was going to create a compose action and then when we fill in the form I'm going to just add that option into that compose action and that will just tell me what um, the value is going to come back as and then I know whether I need to do anything with it. Well, can, can I just pass that straight to SharePoint? Do I need to say if it's a one then set it to true uh, etc etc. So we're just going to go through and have a look. <clears throat> just say we've got a little issue there. Who's going to find, find the item that we're looking for? Okay, so we can now we know that we need to do a, uh, a, a conversion. So if it comes back as a particular value from forms, then we can pass the correct value into SharePoint. And that's what we're doing here. So we're just going to test that out. Again, I'm not going deep dive into this. I'm just showing you what we can do. The nice thing is the sessions later on will go into more detail on how to actually do this for yourself. So it's a, a whistle stop tour, remember, it's a, a quick run through, <clears throat> but it just gives you a visibility of, of how these applications are built up and some of the testing that maybe we do along the way to make sure we get the right, the right data. So what we're going to do now, we need to run this um, expression on all of our yes, no fields. So we're just going to use a scope, which is that orange box. And then we're going to put in multiple compose actions. We're going to put our, if this response from forms, then convert it to that response uh, from somewhere else. So I think that's all of them in place now. And that's one moving. <coughs> so I'll put them in a scope so it's easy to collapse them away. <coughs> and now all I need to do is put in the um, the, the compose actions. In fact, actually the reason um, this didn't show up is the compose, when I went into the SharePoint list because it's a yes, no field, it didn't show me the options and let me pick from the options from the form, which is why I converted it to just text and I can pass that in. So now if we run through, if we run in our um, form, then we can see that that flow gets triggered and it populates the responses into our SharePoint list. Nice and easy, dead easy, we can do whatever we want from that. Um, what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna embed the form into the Microsoft Teams, so create a new tab in Teams, embed the form in and people can fill it in right from there within our, our one-stop shop for, uh, for COVID. Okay, what we're going to do next in our teams, um, in our Microsoft team, is we're going to embed a website. So this is just a UK government website, and this just gives general information that people need about COVID-19. We're posting uh, another website here, so this is just going to give some information. Ah, now actually what I want to do is I'm going to show a PDF there, but that's not quite working. So what I can actually do is use the PDF option in, my, in the tab, and I can then point to a PDF that I've loaded into my files area, and then that will let me embed that PDF in there. So we've got websites, PDFs, we've got a form embed in there, we've got a wiki for our, um, uh, for our policies, which is nice. So the team's coming together quite nicely. Okay, so what we're, what we're doing now is we're creating our Power Virtual Agent. So this looks like Flow on the design surface. Um, what we're doing is we're going in and we're, um, we're changing our questions and our answers. So this is our symptom checker. So we want to use a bot for somebody to uh, have a conversation with to establish whether we think that they have got symptoms of COVID-19 or, or not. And if we believe they have, then they need to fill in the self-declaration form. So what I'm doing here is I'm asking some questions. Do you think you're suffering from COVID-19, yes or no? If they pick yes, then we take them to another question. If they click no, then we maybe send them a friendly message and then just check their symptoms anyway. Um, and then we might have three options. Um, do you have a fever? Yes, no, I don't know. If I don't know, then we can give them some more general information about what, a fee what constitutes a fever, what temperature they're looking for, good information. And then we can route them back to the question and ask them again. Do you, do you have a fever, yes or no? So we're trying to think of all of the different outcomes that somebody might take on uh, filling this in, and then we can just build up the intelligence there as well. It's nice, we can make the messages a little bit friendly um, as well, so it's a little bit um, nicer than to have a chat with. Remember, we want to make this a, a welcoming, engaging bot for them to have a conversation with. So we just build out that logic uh, throughout, and there's a number of questions we want to ask about their symptoms. Have they got a fever? Have they got a new cough? Um, are they exhibiting any other symptoms? Are they having problems breathing? Now, that's quite a serious one. So if people are having respira res breathing problems, I can't say it, 
um, in the struggling spree, if we've got pain in the chest, we need to make sure that they're calling 999 or um, 911 uh, for everyone in America. So we can say, you know, have you reported to this in the medical um, uh, services? If no, then please go ahead and do it. And then we can carry on. So we can actually give extra information in as we go through here. And then we can just ask if they're experiencing any other symptoms. So like I say, really nice design surface, dead easy, drag and drop, put your questions in, choose your answers, and then move the connectors to route through. We could also have different topics. We could have a special topic for particular symptoms to go through more, or we might want to transition the com uh, conversation. So we don't have to put everything in one big topic here. We can have multiple topics and we track the user backs and forwards. And then at the end, what we want to do is make a decision. So based on the answers they've given us, do we think that maybe they actually, uh, the user does have COVID-19 or not? And if they do, then we can send them a message that links them to the, um, the self-declaration form. And if we don't think they are suffering COVID-19, then we can wish them well and pass them on the day and ask if there's anything else that we can help with. <clears throat> so here I think we're just asking if you've got any other symptoms. There's a few other symptoms that um, you know may signify COVID-19 but may not. So just let that run through. So we'll just take them on. So we want to look at whether there's a, a combination of symptoms maybe. Um, I'm not saying that the way we've got it here is exactly correct, so please don't follow this as a, a medical, medically approved way of uh, uh, running a symptom checker, which is my implementation for demo purposes, but it just gives you a flavor of how it works. Okay, so we can see here the flow through. This just takes us down the same path. Let that run its course. One of the hardest things here with power of virtual agents is just understanding the conversation flow. <clears throat> you have to pay a lot of attention to how you think people will do it, what they're going to ask, what they're going to respond. Um, obviously, the more precise you are in the options you give them to reply with, the easier it is to read through a, a structural conversation. The more variety you give them, the, the more interpretation you need to do on, uh, on their answers. So just need to pay that some time. Okay, looking pretty good. So now we can take them through to the end of the conversation. <coughs> Make sure everything's connected up. Okay, so we can just have multiple conditions um, here. So some of these conditions take us to the same response and one of our condition takes us to a, a different response here. If anybody knows any jokes, now's a good time. Just while we wait for this set section to finish. Okay, All right. Nice little topic checker there as well. So again, if you're familiar with Power Automate, it just checks the uh, validity of, the, of what you've got. And then we can use the box on the left and we can just test the run through our conversation. So as we use it, we can see on the right hand side, it's actually um, walking through the different actions. So we can see what route it's taken based on the conversation we're having. So that's a really nice way to just test out the flow. <clears throat> you can see we um, had a small issue on our flow. We had a box that wasn't connected up, so it didn't know how to carry on. So just running through this, let us go back, reconnect that box, and then we can just go and check it again. So this is a really neat feature. I mean, this is so easy, like, you know, running bots, how complex as it appeared before to do some kind of artificially intelligent um, um, bot that we can have a conversation with. Power Virtual Agent just makes it dead easy. So you can see here what we do, we just link off. So we can link them directly to the, um, the self-declaration form if we believe they have COVID-19 symptoms. And then of course then that takes us back into our, our Microsoft Flow, which then writes it into, um, into our SharePoint list and it all ties together really nice. What we do here is we can publish it, so we can publish the Power Virtual Agent to different channels. We can publish it to Teams or Slack or Skype or uh, just a web chat to put on your website, anything like that. So I've just published it to Teams. You can see here I've embedded it into Teams. I can have, now have a chat and a conversation with my COVID-19 COVID symptom checker, and I can run through exactly the same that I just did with that web form, but within Microsoft Teams. So again, it's all together. 
Okay, what we're going to look at here, this is how we're going to create a, um, a, an adaptive card. So we want to run this to enable us uh, to send out a, a mental health checker essentially a couple of days a week and we want to just um, ensure that people are feeling okay while they're working from home, they're slightly isolated from the team. So it gives us a way to um, have an early uh, awareness of, of any issues. So we're just going to put in a, a nice image again, image is always important, make it friendly, give it a nice title. Uh, we want to make it clear that it's optional um, due to privacy um, and data protection rights. Um, it is optional for people to fill this in, but we want to try and encourage people to do it. Um, in our case, we would recommend just deleting that data after a period of time if it's no longer needed. Um, we don't want it to be any kind of factor on people's employment status. I would recommend taking legal advice uh, before you implement something like this just to make sure you're okay working with this data. This is just for um, demo purposes, of course. So we're going to ask a question first. We're going to ask the user, how do you feel today? How are you feeling? Rating of 1 to 10. Oh, bit mad. Pretty rubbish. All right, not bad, same as normal, pretty good. Okay, actually, oh, do you know what? I'm feeling really good. I'm really productive today, great. So it's rating of one to 10, uh, just on how, how the user's feeling. Quick click, that's it, and we can easily go through. And the other thing that's really important is when users are getting exercise. We wanna make sure that people are getting enough exercise because that really does help with the mental health um, uh, uh, throughout this whole period. So we're going to do some rating of one to five. When did you last go out for exercise? Oh, not for, you know, not for a long while. I've been cooped up in my bedroom working, not seeing any sun or anything like that. Or yesterday, today, you know, planning on going later, that kind of thing. So again, we just want to understand when people have got outside and have some physical exercise. So we can just draw it. But the nice thing, as we build this up, you can see the bottom um, uh, of the page here, it's building up a JSON object. We spoke about a JSON just before. JSON really is something that's gonna be very important in this brave new world. So it is worth looking at that. It's just a data structure uh, model that we can use to store our data. So this is, the, uh, this is what our adaptive card is. And then where we publish that to defines how it gets rendered. So if we push it to um, Outlook email, or if we push it to Microsoft Teams, et cetera, then, um, then it will render it in the right way. So it's a really nice technology to enable us to do this. So what we're going to do now, we're going to create a, another um, flow in Power Automate and we're just going to, on a regular schedule, once a day at 3 o'clock, we're going to send that adaptive card to our users. So we're going to create a dictionary of users that um, needs to be, um, this needs to be sent out to because we're going to send it directly to them in Teams, in a Teams chat. So you might want to get that list of users from um, your Office 365 users action or something. I'm just doing a, an array, just myself in there so I don't annoy people building this. Okay, <clears throat> and then I don't want to send this every day. I, don't want, I only want to send it on uh, a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday because we don't want to just annoy people constantly over and over. It's just to get, um, uh, get an idea. So we've got to do some really intelligent uh, data analysis, but an easy way for me to do it is just to use a switch statement. So I just have a switch Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, do nothing on the days I don't want to, and then the default action will actually send it in. So we have a, so for each user in our array that we want to send it to, it's just our email address, we want to send an adaptive card using um, uh, Teams chat, and then we paste in that JSON object that we got from, uh, from our adaptive card builder. And we paste that in. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set, we set the time out of that adaptive card to two hours. So they have between three and 5 p.m. to fill it in. If they don't fill it in that period, it's going to, we're gonna use the configure run after um, uh, um, capability to send an email to the executive team to say this user hasn't filled out maybe they're just busy didn't have chance to do it but maybe there's a bigger problem so if they don't fill it out send an email to the management team and if they do then we just go and write that into a SharePoint list so what we've got here is a SharePoint list where we build up a, uh, the wellness the response from the wellness survey because it's just easy for the management team to consume that way so again, we're just going to add some columns on here that match the questions that we asked in our adaptive card. And then if the user did fill out the adaptive card, then we're going to write the res uh, response that they gave into the SharePoint list. And that's what we're doing here with another SharePoint create item action. So we'll just go through, <coughs> format the title nicely, just pick out our 
uh, questions and answers. So what we did in the adaptive card, we actually gave a, a, a nice name to the, uh, the questions so we can find them easily in Power Automate. So please remember your naming conventions. It's very, very important and useful. Be kind to your future self when you build things like this. Okay, so we'll either get an email to the admin team or we'll uh, um, uh, write it to SharePoint. I, I generally like to just put a compose action after parallel branches just to tie it all together. It looks nice and neat. So I can run that. That's run successfully. So we can see on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, it's not going to do anything. So I run it. It sends me a message in Microsoft Teams chat. I can then fill it in and it updates to give the, uh, the, the thank you message. We go back into our flow, just check it's run. We can see it's run, follow it through. We can see the response that was submitted from, uh, from my chat. And then we can see the results of the SharePoint. And there we go, and it's in SharePoint now for us. So it's easy for us to consume. We can group that by uh, the date it was submitted so we can get a grouping of everything together. And we can also go in and use some column formatting in SharePoint so we can just grade it so it's easy to write. So if it's something we need to be worried about, we can make it look red. If it's a, a mediocre response, we can make it look orange like this. Um, or if it's a uh, particularly feeling great response, then we can um, show it as a, as a green response. So just fill that in a couple of times, just get some different options in there. Put a message, you know, put a comment in as well. What have you done today? Or why are you feeling that way? Why are you not feeling good? So run through that. And again, we can see SharePoint. Now we've got some red marks here. So we know straight away, nice and easy using column formatting that we probably want to go and approach that. I told you it'd be quick. Okay, so what we're doing here is confirmed cases. So we're going to actually have this as a data storage. We're going to load in some external data. I'm actually pulling this off Wikipedia in here. So we want to track confirmed cases of coronavirus. So what we want to do in our portal is show some analytics and some uh, analysis from Power BI um, using this data. So this is just going to track how many um, confirmed cases there are in different regions of the UK, um, how many tests have been completed, how many deaths have been registered in hospitals and how many deaths have been registered um, overall uh, based off the death certificate as well. So we're going to track these and we've got a, a reliable data source in uh, Wikipedia for this and that's what we're going to use. <coughs> so we'll do it in SharePoint again, it's easy to use SharePoint to manage your data and create views on it and manipulate it and then we can use other tools off the back of that to, to show it. So. Just go through and create the rest of our columns. There's a few in here for us to create. There we go. Now bear in mind this whole application, literally, I think the end to end time was about four hours it took me to build this. Um, that was the whole recording length that I had. So this stuff can be built up really, really quick once you start practicing it. Okay, so it's going to paste in my data. So I've um, I, I generated an Excel spreadsheet off the Wikipedia data, and I've just pasted it into the quick edit um, view in here. Just need to change some settings there, I think. <clears throat> there we go. Now I'm pasting in I'm pasting in about fifteen hundred items here. The quick edit does start struggling a little bit um, with that volume of data, so um, we just go through and tidy it tidy it all up. Of course, we could use Power Automate. We could use a Flow to actually get that data from an external source and load into our SharePoint list. That would be the ideal solution. Um, for this demo, I'm just loading it in myself. Make sure that's all valid. There we go. Oh, oh nearly there. There we go. So, it wasn't that, so what's happening here is it's not actually um, formatting my dates properly. Um, so I'm just going through, really working my data a little bit, and there we go. Oh, so these are all set as numbers, um, but not all the data is numbers, so I just need to go and tidy that up. There's some, uh, some minus values in there as well, I didn't realise. When I created the list here, I actually set the minimum value to be zero, but for some reason the data is some minus values. Um, I don't know why, we can investigate that. But I just need to go and tidy those columns up a little bit. I want to leave this in just to show you some of the <clears throat> some of the issues we come across, some of the things that are a little bit difficult. Um, you know, just so you can see the process that we go through to build things like this. Sometimes, you know, the, uh, so data is always one of the hardest things to work with uh, when it comes to SharePoint because if your types don't match perfectly, then it can uh, lead to some frustration. So sometimes you have to work through these steps, go over and over and over it, just to make sure you get it all right. 
So now we've got our data right, we can move into Power BI. So I'm going to go and connect my Power BI to uh, my SharePoint list. So I'm putting my site name in there. I can choose the list that I want to load it from, our wellness survey and our, our analy analytics information. <clears throat> and then we can go through and we can just tidy our data up a bit. So we're going to go in and we're going to remove the columns that we're not interested in. SharePoint delivers a whole bunch of columns that are just not usable. We could leave them there. I like to tidy it up and just leave the columns that are, are useful. Just find it easier to work with my data. I'm going to change my data types as well. So if it's a date um, column, then I'm going to set it to a date. And if it's a number, I'm going to set it to a number. It just means that when we're using Power BI, we can actually work with that data more intelligently. We can filter based on the date. We can aggregate or sum or average our numbers as well. So it's really useful to to, to work with your data, manipulate your data uh, within Power BI. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. And once we've got that, we can start to visualize the data now. So we can add some visualizations on a simple table just to test it. Maybe try some bar, ch some bar charts. So what I'm going to do is create a custom column. Uh, this custom column is going to be a date. So I'm going to load a date um, that it, the information was submitted. <coughs> so I can work, as I just said before, with an actual date column. Bit more tidy up there. Okay, so now I think our data is in a good, uh, good state. So what we can do, we can actually bring in and view a number of cases um, uh, by uh, by date. So we can see what the uh, what what the change is. In fact, I think this is our wellness data, isn't it? So um, so we can see what is the average feeling across our business. Okay, so here we're going to look at the external data. So this is our um, confirmed cases, uh, sorry, this is our, uh, our deaths um, across um, hospitals and um, all of them. Um, so we can just view, see where we are on those peaks. We can actually visualize where the cases are around the UK. So if somebody is in the in London, they're probably at more risk because there's more cases there. Or if they're in um, the Northwest, uh, we can establish where our workforce is and we can maybe send some different guidance to them. So we can build up these reports nice and easily. We can also see the rate of testing on the bottom left as well. So as we can see, the, the number of tests ramping up. So again, it just lets us act more intelligently on the data that we're putting in. Just that list of numbers, it's difficult for us as humans to visualize that. Power BI really lets us do that easily. So we can just now go into Microsoft Teams. We've published a Power BI dashboard. Go into Teams, we can find it, and we can embed that dashboard right in our Teams tab. So again, we have one place that we go to actually view all of our COVID-19 uh, response information. Users have got one place. We can build out, um, so we build out the mobile view here, and this is going to let us um, show it in Power in, in Teams. We've got some mobile views of our data. Okay. And this lets us pin it to the dashboard. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not COVID-19, it's just a regular cough right now. So the reason we wanted to create a dashboard with those visualizations in is to create our um, Power App. So we want to have a companion app for people. Um, obviously we had the teams, we want a companion app where we can show information on uh, for people as well. So we're gonna share the news that we've published, we're gonna share the analytics that we've seen. Um, and maybe also um, give the ability to receive some alerts. So we're going to use this to send notifications to users as well because Power Apps and also Flow has the ability to um, put uh, notifications on the user's mobile phone. Um, by making a companion app, it makes it easier to ensure that all your users have um, Power Apps on their phone so they can receive those notifications. So we're just going to build up a couple of screens here, uh, like I say, one for news. So we're actually going to load the news from Microsoft Teams. We could, load it. We could put the news into a SharePoint list loaded from there, but we did it straight to Teams here. So what we're going to do is use the Teams connector. Um, so we're just going to sort of navigation out here in a component. We're using a component in Power Apps so we can have a, um, a regular header that we reuse across all of our screens. Now we can't directly access the screens within the component so to do our navigation. So what we need to do is create some uh, properties on the component and pass in the screen name for each of the three different screens we want to work with. And then within the component, we can do our navigation option um, from those properties. Again, 
I'm going through this very fast, I'm aware of that, but I'm just hopefully uh, giving you information you need to, uh, to, to be able to do this, and then some of those sessions will go more deep dive into these topics, okay? So here I'm just struggling to, um, to um, access the property name, uh, and I completely forgot that you have to put in the component name, dot, and then the property name uh, to get access to it. So that's all that was happening there. Give it a nice icon. It's always important to give it a nice icon. Um, looking for a nice syringe, can't find it, so we'll go for an alert icon. Um, okay, and now we can publish that app. I save and publish quite regularly. Okay, so we've got our header across all of our screens. And then we can put in our properties for our screen names. And test that works. Okay, we test it works, we've got no way of knowing what screen we're on. So let's just put a label on to say, to say what the page title is. I'll do within the component, we could highlight the button to signify uh, what page we're on. That's probably what I would do normally. Um, but just for, for this quick show, we'll just put a, a, a title on there. Okay, so what we've got now is a gallery. We've got a gallery item in here, and this is going to go off to Microsoft Teams, and it's going to get um, the Teams channel um, and get all of the posts within that channel. It is rather difficult to find the team channel ID and the topic ID, so um, there are some guides out there to help you do that. Um, I'm just kind of whizzing through here. I've, I've kind of got them and um, pasted them in. But now we can see we've got the HTML, uh, sorry, we've got the text of the post, so all the news stories is in there. But it doesn't formulate very nicely, so we're going to use a HTML um, box here because we can see it had a little P tag in there. So if you use a HTML box, then it formats it nicely. I'm also just going to, I don't want that little message at the end to say Mark Stokes posted this via Power Automate, so I'm just going to cut that off at the end. I'm going to do some little text manipulation to get rid of that because it's, it's useless. Let me just lay it out nicely. And we've got our news stories there. Like I say, we could pull that from SharePoint if we'd put their intermediate, um, but we may as well just load it straight from Teams just to show we can interact with Teams there. So that's our news feed done. So now our analytics, what we're going to do in here is we're going to pull in some Power BI uh, dashboards, those, are, those uh, visualizations we just pinned to a dashboard, we can now access them using, um, uh, using Power Apps and bring them in. So again, we have our nice companion app. So people can either use Teams or they can use the Power App to get access to the same information. We can present it in multiple ways. And there we go. So that's our, uh, not, not do alerts, I don't think we've uh, run out of time, uh, but that is our, uh, our Power App. Maybe instead of alerts, we'll just put some useful information there. Maybe put some videos in there from Microsoft Stream um, that, that users can actually consume um, you know, to get information about what's currently going on. So we'll embed that video in. That's nice. We'll just change that to information. But that could be our alerts because we use it for alerts. <coughs> okay, and there's our power up. Nice and easy. I'll just scroll through and see that working. Lovely. Easy as that. Anyone could do it, even me. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to a couple of our flows now. So what we can do now, we go back to um, one of our flows and we want to send a notification. So when we write the, um, the news post to the team, we also want to send a notification to users using Power Apps. I'm just going to turn that off so we don't spam the Teams channel. Um, and then I want to go through and, and, and do this. So when a new item comes in, we're just going to put the message as a notification through Power Apps. Like I said, we could do notifications using Power Automate as well. I've chosen to use Power Apps. It's easier to get on people's devices if we have the companion app. Okay, format it nice. So we're just going to cut that bottom off again because we don't want to send the, uh, the published by Mark Stokes uh, uh, using Power Automate. We're going to test and run that. And success, it's run through. <clears throat> Turn it back on so uh, we can leave it in a good state. So now when a new news item comes in, it works. So there we have it. That's a really fast run through, very sped up, but um, it gives you a flavor of building, how we build all of those applications in our, dem our demo app. So. That is my session. I hope that gives you a, a, a good overview, a whistle-stop tour, definitely of uh, eight of the most important products in Microsoft 365. Uh, the rest of the day should take you through how to build these in more detail. You're gonna see lots of information about uh, going uh, deeper into these. So hopefully you can come away from today able to build exactly this for yourself. I hope you enjoyed that. I've been Mark Stokes, and thank you very much.